and it's a good morning from week three, Pilates in lockdown. Um, let me know you're in the room. I'll obviously wait by the camera um, behind the lens, obviously making sure that I can see people tuning in. Hi, Diane, Leslie and Susan. Great to see you watching. Um, so today is, you need to know that I've um, struggled in my thinking, not that I haven't done lots of it, I've done too much of it, I could argue, to know where to settle. Except that I know that today needs to be much more of a Matt Works um, bias Pilates workout. And hello there. Have ready with you um, your coloured, your coloured, your yellow band. I'm not using it the whole workout, I'm using it for some of the workout. Morning, Ken. Morning, Sarah and Dan. Today we will use just one video, and the aim being it's 30 minutes of consolidated learning in that moment for the body, Wednesday learning. Tomorrow I will do a HIT type workout, which is the strength training that our bodies need, and make that the priority, finishing off with a kind of Pilates resting phase. Morning, um, Lorna too. So if you're coming into the room for the workout today, and Andy, great to see you in the room too. You're coming in to use your mat. You, if you've got a yellow band, that's great. The other thing I'm going to add to the moment is some people, when we come to lying on the front, hi Patricia, Margaret, and two other people, the, I'm going to suggest that for the people that struggle lying on your front because you find it goes straight into your lower back, get a rolled up hand towel um, ready to use for lying on the front and you'll put that under your hip bones. The pubic bone will be free. This will be under the hip bones um, and maybe even spans, depending on the width of it, under the belly button area, the navel. Um, I'm going to make that more sense making, as it were, um, when we actually come to lie on your front. So, hi, Janine and Sue. The suggestion that if you're struggling to lie on your front because we increasingly need to get onto our fronts, then find a rolled up hand towel or piece of foam. I mean, the other thing you can use is, uh, but it would have to be this narrow. There's a, a narrow pillow thing here, but it doesn't want to go really beyond your ribs. Um, and it doesn't want to be too deep in its um, padding. It's not there for you to go to sleep on. It's there for you to help your lumbar spine. Good morning, Debbie and Jane. So today, for those just wandering in, um, we will be using the yellow band at times, not all the way through. And there's just one video today. I've decided that I need to make more sense. I have an inclination that lockdown is going to go on forever. And so for us to naively think, let's just wait and get back in the studio on the 15th of February, it, I think, is highly unlikely. If indeed we do end up back in the studio, we will just be so amazed and thankful. That's great. But in the meantime, let's plan for the long game. And therefore, I'm making the workout very Pilates, mat work-esque. I've got loads of ideas in my head, which the truth is, despite having spent four hours, I'm, I'm still not settled because I can't see you all. I'm not settled on just what I want to do, so bear with me. I'll teach you the best I can um, in terms of mat work classes when I can't see you. You're going to start standing because that's always going to give us a great sensation of to where our global muscles are, the whole kind of body area from heels to head. You're breathing deeply in and out. You're aware of your feet being level. You're aware of the ground beneath your feet and your knees are soft. And it's a stiff upper lip moment, isn't it? As we do our breathing squats. You're very aware that we're in lockdown. You're very aware that life doesn't have the choices you'd like it to have. But we can choose to move and move we will choose. As you go into your squat, we did loads of work last week through the um, foam roller and lots of ways of squatting with the foam roller. Remember that I've said, if for you a squat makes far more sense when you use the foam roller, then never ever um, feel you can't reach for it, okay? This is more about you finding your best way of moving. So the inhaling, I'm doing these squats at a relative pace. Um, your sense of pushing into your heels and then standing up with the legs straightening out without locking out, um, rhythm is what the body wants. Inhaling and exhaling. I need blood flow before I get you being more detailed on the mat. And that's all this squat is doing for you. It's giving you that blood flow. People, the next time you go down to the squat will stay. Calm the whole system down now. Inhaling and exhaling. I put my hands above my um, pec area, my breast area. Pull my shoulder blades together. My other hand under my navel belly button um, area 
And I'm going to take the <coughs> connection into the hamstring and the glute more specifically, breathing, inhaling, and exhaling. And by having my hand um, be kind of um, in front of my belly button, I know that I'm starting to core stabilize more efficiently as the breath works more effectively in giving me feedback that the abdominal wall is supporting the spinal neutral. The hand above the breast pec area tells me that my shoulder blade area isn't rounding and losing its connection. And the blood that the circulatory system wants is starting to happily flow around the body. Stay still here, let's have our first pelvic tilts. So the breath out, pelvic floor, do that slight bit of flexing, feeling the lower abs, feeling the pelvic floor and the hip bones. Just do that tilt and then going back to neutral. Exhaling, keep the shoulder blades together, draw your pelvic floor. Don't try and overly round your back, it's not about rounding the spine, is it? This is simply about creating a tiny bit of stretch through the lumbar spine by activating your core muscles. Inhaling and back again, breath out, drawing up and drawing in. Don't let anything from above the navel move because your lumbar spine is just here and leave that be. Put your hands on your thighs, you're ready to roll down to the ground. Big breath in. Breathing out, the chin goes to the throat and you have your first flexion moment of the rib cage. You're bending in half where the ribs are. Breathe in and now roll down, spread your toes. Have the heels into the ground and let the head hang. Keep the legs bent and the tailbone reaching for the ceiling, which means you'll get your hamstring stretch that's official, not one that's um, born out of locked out legs and a rounded lower back. Gently rock towards your toes and then roll to tippy toes and walk yourself into all fours. Finding the all fours moment, we're going to cat cow stretch. I've got my spine long, shoulders away from the neck, and I take a huge inhale. On the breath out, use your pelvic floor, pelvic tilt, and find the spine rolling from tailbone to the back of the neck into a rounded cat stretch. Breathe into the back of your rib cage. Breathing out, go through the opposite range of movement again where the tailbone starts to lift and reach towards the ceiling and you follow through all the way until you end up with your armpits pulling backwards as it were, the sternum forwards and the crown of your head to the ceiling. You've now got the extension. Once more through the range then we go, pelvic floor, pelvic tilt, tailbone flexors, flexors under, you travel through the vertebral column until you find yourself in the round back with your shoulders still pulling away from the neck, you breathe in. Breathing out again, tailbone, travel through. You're pulling against the ground with the hands and the shins so that the extension, this is this um, big dip in the back, isn't sunk and trapped, it's more extended away, vertebra away from vertebra. Okay people, and then Find yourself into your flattened spinal area, you're into all fours. Just to get the body a wee bit warmer, you're in your all fours, long spine or neutral without a dip. Tuck the toes under the feet, once again push the ground away, we're just easing to make more connection globally. Exhaling, I've got my knees hovering as I press into the hands, find my armpits, keep my chin nod, and allow the rib cage to navel, navel to spine. It's a really small move, and really at this point, I want you to ground yourself, and the hands find the ground, that leads to your armpits, and as your feet push into the ground, that should lead to your pelvic lower fibres of the abdominal area. People, this is your last one, at which point, bend at your elbows, and give your body that flexion, the release of the lower back, take two huge inhales and exhales, and then we're lying on our back. So this is the start of the Pilates repertoire. You lie on your back, have your head cushion under your head, feel for either side of the mat, make sure it's level, look at your knee joints, make sure they're level with each other, palms of your hands are reaching, and again you're breathing in and out. Allow the ground to be felt behind you, allow the head to be felt on top of that cushion area, but not the back of the neck. As you're breathing in and out and the ground is there behind your sacrum, 
Add a little bit of a pelvic tilt on the breath out and on the breath in, find yourself back to neutral. Breathing out, go heavy through the feet, draw your pelvic floor up and kiss the ground with the lumbar spine, the rib cage placement, and then take the pelvic position back to neutral. Never underestimate the value of the action of true pelvic tilting without the bum squeeze because it will bring hydration, your WD40-ing, uh, parts of the spine that otherwise get quite um, dehydrated and therefore get stiff. So the inhale and exhale is your system that you're using to create the movement, the muscle action is your pelvic floor, internal obliques or see it as your lower abdominals, and then stay in your absolute neutral. Neutral is where the lumbar has the fractional gap. Place your hands, exhale now, chin nod, and do your ab prep, which is where you curl, and inhale, and curl. The sequence requires you to stay heavy at both feet, heavy at the back of the sacrum, that the hip bones don't flex, because it's actually the last rib to the base of the skull, part of the spine, that does the movement. That's the purpose of the ab prep, is to breathe movement. You feel it as abdominal connection, because the obliques shorten as you go up and back down refuse to tuck under as you go up. We're going to continue but with the hands behind the head now. So you're keeping the ab prep going, curl with the hands behind the head and uncurl. Use a huge inhale on the journey down and the breath out equal, it can only ever be equal if the in breath was deep and the exhale is as deep. Inhaling down you go, keeping the skull so that it's got a slight rock with the chin drawing down towards the throat. Stay up there this time. In the upward space, crown of the head to the ceiling, I'm looking at my knees, nose points to navel. Now breathing out, pelvic tilt. Find your imprint, breathe in, and allow yourself to go back to neutral. Exhaling, find that gentle imprint as you roll your hip bones in the direction of the ground, the ground behind you. You may feel as though it's your waistband that's gently being pulled to the floor as you experience the uniform roll of the pelvis into imprint for the lumbar and back to neutral. The next time you find yourself in imprint stay, bring one leg up to tabletop, hold on to the back of it, bring your second leg up and then roll back down. Take your band and if you want to use it, don't use a band if you don't want to. If you struggle to find connections, then by all means use a band. If you're stiff, um, as Tom demonstrated on Friday, then use a band. I've got the band going over my shins. I've got my kneecaps level. I'm going to pull down on the band so that it helps me feel grounded. Obviously, if I pulled and let the band pull my legs down, then my legs would move. But my legs are resisting the band at the pelvic end, as it were. So staying level, I've got my hands reaching, shoulders and armpits, I am in imprint. Exhale, curl and pull the hands to the floor without the legs moving. Inhale and feel the band tension release slightly. Breathing out, gently pulling the armpits and the hands down to the floor, breathing in and allowing the tension on the band to help me down. Breath out, as I pull into the band, I draw my rib cage down and inhaling, I return back. Exhale. Pulling down against the floor with the band. Inhaling. You're looking for symmetry of movement, that as you move, equal shoulder blades come off the ground and back down. Next time you're up there, you'll stay. Breathing in, two, three, four. Pull that band down. Breathing out, two, three, four. So the exhale, pull against the band and down to the floor and the inhale, slowly float the band up. If your neck's involved, that means you haven't curled up, so simply pop your head down and do exactly the same exercise with your head down. Exhaling, pulling against that band, inhaling. So either you're up and able to pull and float, navel spine pulling down and floating up, or your head's down, and it's exactly the same activity. You're tuning in behind you so the back is imprinted. You feel the ground behind you. And when you're pulling against the yellow band, 
Your aim is to get the band to reach to the floor and the abdominal draw to the navel, um, the navel draws to the spine. Okay, people, the next time you find yourself with your arms floating up, band or no band, it's irrelevant, that's fine. Simply take the band around your right leg, foot. So putting the band around your foot, hold the band in one hand, and we're going straight into our oblique work. I've got the band around my right leg, it's bent, I'm still an imprint. Therefore, I'm going to take my left hand behind the head. Exhale, imprint the spine, curl up, and as you curl up, push your free leg away and pull towards the bent leg with the head, neck, and shoulders. Inhale and back down. So breathing out, curl, send the legs straight, inhale and back down. Using the band as a system then, you'll feel as though you can use your upper arm strength, my right arm assisting me to get a good range of motion into rotation and flexion. The journey is a breath out to curl, and then you're gently pulling your elbow towards the inside of the other leg, inhale and back. Exhaling. And inhale and return. Now change it here. Exhale, keep the free leg bent and curl up towards that free leg and straighten out the band leg. Exhale, as I curl, I'm going to push my band leg straight and inhale and back. So I'm now curling up straight. The obliques work differently. It's a slightly different activity. And obviously you're pushing against the band at the same time as pulling the navel to the spine. Breathe out, pelvic floor, navel to spine, extend the band leg, breathing in and uncurl. Last time. And uncurl. All right, stay where you are. Keep the same band um, leg in place and take the leg with the band to the ceiling and the other leg straight and then bend both legs in again. Then take the band leg away, both legs go straight and pull back to bent legs again. The exercise is single leg stretch. You keep alternating which leg straightens to the sky, one leg with the band and one leg without. I'm keeping my head down. I'm going for an imprint of the lumbar spine to resist the movement of the legs. That's the breath out. The inhale is the legs bending. The breath out is the exchange. So alternating legs to the ceiling and return. Keeping the imprint of my spine, keeping my arm pulling against the band as my leg pulls to assist. Okay, ready to change sides to go through a very similar repertoire on the other side. Hopefully it's the same, forget similar. So give me time to change. My band is around my left leg, my left leg is bent. My elbow of my left arm, left leg is bent just like my hip is. <coughs> Excuse me. My hand is behind my head. I've got a genuine imprint, kneecaps are level. Breathing out then, I start the curl and extend the free leg. Breathing in, I'll bend that knee back in again and uncurl. Happy with my alignment. The next time as I curl, I'll point my elbow towards the inside of the band leg and inhale, return. The leg that's got the band supporting its position shouldn't move. Inhale and back down. If you've got the chance to understand where your pelvis is, it should be true, left to right, right to left. The thigh bone of the leg that's got the band doesn't want to roll in or roll out. And you want to feel grounded behind that left pelvic area as you curl to get the obliques and return. One more, keeping the movement with the right leg extending and bending. And then we do the left leg. But for this one, you curl up without rotation and the left leg straightens against the band. Inhale down, exhaling. Now you feel the obliques from the left hand hip bone to the navel to the spine. And if you're rolling up and down, it's your shoulder blades that are rolling up and down. You now keep your right leg in tabletop without it gently, you know, drifting in or out. The arm holding the band, think about this people, is being held with the lats and serrats, the armpit area, 
not just the bicep, which is the front of the upper arm. Two more, curl, extend the leg, keep a true imprint of the lumbar without rolling left or right. Last time, and leg comes back. If you're now ready, put your hand down. You're gonna extend the band leg to the ceiling and the, tr the free leg out. Inhale and bend. Exchange other way round. So the band leg reaches away. One reaches up, one reaches into the band. Pelvis is imprinted. Inhaling. You push upwards and downwards, lengthening. Inhale, you come back to tabletop. Exhale, I'm pressing my free hand against the ground because it helps me ground my pelvis. Inhaling and back we go. This should feel almost therapeutic as long as you're not letting your abdominals go and your back leave the ground. Once more each side, it's called single leg stretch. You can do this curled up, but I'm teaching it um, non-curled. You need to know I don't know where my feet are. They've become so ice laden, I can hardly feel them. All right, people, and let that go. Bring yourself up to stand. We're going to, because we're using the band right now around your feet, we're going to quickly go into seated rolling back. Hold the band so that it's light. Um, I'm holding it far enough away. My hands are by my knees. There's a little tension on the band in this shape. We need to get the pelvis rolling. So breathing in and out. On the next breath out, pelvic tilt and start to roll away from your thighs, your arms straighten. Breathe in, breathe out. So at this point, we're not using the band. The band is ready to be used. So breathing out for the pelvic roll. So backwards rolling, navel to spine, elbows bend, sitting up tall. Two more, breathe out. Find your pelvic floor, flex into the lumbar. Don't sink into it, lengthen away from it and coming back. The next time we go down, we're gonna stay. So exhaling, pelvic roll, to a gentle rocking of the back of the pelvis. So in other words, I'm nowhere near my lumbar. Breathe out then, stretch your arms wide, breathe in and pull them back. Exhale, as your arms go wide, stay about the height of your knees, the oblique should work more, your shoulders don't elevate, and the rib cage and able to spine is there. One more, and then pull the arms in, keep the elbows bending as you come back up to seated. Next time you're gonna go rolling down, stay, and now take the band and turn and pull the arms back. So I turn my head and just taking the band, one arm goes down in the direction of the floor, the other one up. It's so subtle, people. It's a small rolling of the shoulder rib cage. You don't hoik your shoulders up towards your neck. You just expand the band as though it's the breathing muscles expanding and contracting. Thighs stay absolutely level, your obliques are working. It's rhythm, precision. And let that go. From that position there, I bend all the way up and then reach for my toes, forgetting um, the tension on the band, there's no need to have it right now. And we'll take you from there then to full roll up, roll down. To get your full roll up, roll down, have your band so that the same way we started last time, make the band stretch over the heel as well as the whole of the foot. Lean backwards, pelvic tilt. Now allow the elbows to bend more and more and more to lay your spine down with absolute symmetry, one vertebra at a time, until you find yourself lengthened out against your mat. Have a huge inhale. Exhale again. Pull the chin to the throat, bend at your elbows, look your thighs being level and start to use the band to assist a better journey of symmetry all the way up into your seated neutral. Inhale, exhaling, pull the chin to the throat, start to find your pelvic floor to find your obliques. My band is just being gently used. When you get to that stiffer place of the spine, pull the band towards you. This is about you mobilising the spine accurately rather than going into the usual deviations of rotations and shifts. Huge inhale. Exhaling, chin nod. Bend your elbows to get that journey 
to wake up the parts of you that are naturally more stiff or more rotated and weaker. All right, the next position then, you're gonna leave your band out of it. You don't need it just now. Thing to do with you is something called leg kick. Now, some of the moves in Pilates mat works, the reason we use the reformer as a better medium for all of us is because it's easier to work with than the mat. The mat is really the ultimate pinnacle of ability. We've got something called leg kick and we've done elements of it, but not quite as it was intended by dear old Joseph. If you want to use your head cushion, you can. You're in a sideline position, which is the position you kind of know. I'm keeping my hand under my head because ultimately the, the um, aim would be that you can support your own alignment. But if that's an issue because you don't get that feedback, you must use your head cushion. Whichever way, have both feet, um, we've done this before, this setup is where the feet are forwards and put your hand in place. So my feet are lined up with the front edge, bottom end of a mat. And really, I did, in theory, my back, the whole of my pelvis to my neck, is lined up with the back line of the mat. I can feel the back line there. Take your hand on your hip bone first of all and see if the top leg will go a bit further forwards without the hip bone moving. And then explore, point the toe and see if the top leg can go backwards of the bottom leg as though towards the back end of the mat without rolling backwards. Take the top leg forwards, flexing the ankle and pull that leg as far forwards, keep your hand on your hip bone and then pull backwards, backwards, backwards without your pelvis moving. This is known as leg kick. Obviously right now we're not kicking, we're doing leg position. The leg kick requires really a good pelvic um, stabilisation and I'm wanting you to realise what should be staying still and what should move. You can increasingly take the leg forwards and backwards so my range is starting to increase once I realise that my pelvis is staying true. The underneath leg is absolutely anchored with the side bottom. The hip bones aren't shifting and lifting. Okay, I hope this is making sense. I'm pressing down on the underneath side of me, my waist off the floor on the side. I'm lying because it's exactly the same sideline guidelines for leg kick as it is for the side lying series. Okay, let's see if we can create a little bit more range. Put your hand now gently forwards. I'm going to go kick, kick, and then drive it back. Free up your hip a little bit, but if I say free up your hip, particularly your bendy wendies, I don't need to start rolling around the ground, okay? So inhaling, exhale, inhale, drive it back. And one, two, drive it away. You can hold on lightly if it gives you, at the moment I believe I'm giving you the feel of the exercise, not necessarily the right technique, but the range of possibility that the leg within the hip can move quite rhythmically and vigorously and actually therefore assist some of the rearrangement of the tensions that go on. So kick, kick and reach back. Kick, kick, driving reach. One more, kick, kick drive and reach it back and let that go. Bend the knees in, we're playing, remember. I'm going straight onto the front. <coughs> in lying on your front, we'll do an element of um, breaststroke prep. So first things first, I'm going to suggest you put your hands so that they're more or less um, under your shoulder, but slightly wider than your shoulders are. Elbows are bent. I, I can get a range of movement. I'm going to put my hands either side of my mat, I feel more comfortable there. My feet are reaching for the end of the mat. My abdominal wall core connects. This is where, when I talked about a towel, I should do this actually. This is where, um, take the time. So if you find it goes into your lower back, anything lying on the front, take that hand towel that I talked about and lay it under your hip bones. So you lie down under the hip bones here, not under the pubic bone. So the towel's in place. It's assisting you maintain a neutral pelvis. From there then, go back to where I was. Hands are off the mat for me sideways, not up here, they're just here. Kind of lined up more or less with my shoulders. My legs are already reaching, but my thighs are relaxed outwards to start. I want my pubic bone to feel almost imprinted. 
Breathing in and out, my rib cage um, pulls away from the ground. And on the next breath in, as I push my forearms against the ground that pull my shoulder, away, shoulder blades away from my neck, the head will look forwards. And then the sternum will lift up. And without lifting my last rib off the ground, I've got the extensions from the upper spine and I lower down again. Doing it a wee bit quicker. So inhaling, up you go. Exhaling, down you flow. Inhale, imagine nudging a marble with your nose and you push across the floor and then you come back down again. So it's the correct movement for the skull, the cervical spine, and then following into the thoracic spine. I'm gently pressing or pulling the ground under me. Um, when you land this front leg, see what happens if you pull against the hands and the forearms as though pulling the ground under you. In other words, if you were crawling across the ground, sliding forwards, and it will give you a little bit more of a, a connection. Just do two more here. As you're inhaling, up you go, exhaling down, and all of that without going into your lower back. Stay hovered now, so you're neither one extreme nor the other, and take attention to the legs. You're gonna take your feet as wide as your mat is, checked, and then you're gonna bend and pull the heels together. So you've got an element of lateral rotation and the heels squeezing in. If you need to put your head down, you can, um, but ideally you want to support the back of the um, neck, back of the upper body. My heels are squeezing, my feet are turned out, my thighs are turned out, my pubic bone is dominant, my hip bones are not on the mat. Breathe in. Breathing out as you press the ground with the palms of the hands and on, um, forearms, Pull the heels together and let the thighs do a gentle float. Inhaling and lower down. Exhale, press against the ground without going anywhere with the upper body. Draw the heels together, get the pubic bone heavy and then let this heel squeeze. You'll find the side of the bottom and the back of the thigh. The connection with the upper body should take you from hip bones to oblique ribs into armpits and back down. Can you see how it's almost imperceptible that my thighs lift? My thighs lengthen away first and then there's that general floating away. The heels squeezing and then coming back down. So the trunk stability, the whole of the belly, the abdomen, and the front of you activated to take the support for the spine then let the back of the thigh glutes work really hard. You've just got two more. You're feeling this connection here. Nothing in the lumbar spine. Rib cage continuously connected for the front being supported. And then let that go. Okay, that's a journey into the future of where we're headed. Take yourself back now into a chance pose in terms of releasing opposing range of movement and then you're ready for the other side of your side lying. <clears throat> your head cushion's there, you line yourself up by the back end of your mat. Once you've got your alignment, bring your thighs, legs forwards towards the front corner and you're breathing in and out here. This is where we practice the leg kick. The kick of the top leg goes one, two, you then point the toe and it pulls back, back. You're putting your fingertips to your hip bone, <coughs> excuse me, I need to cough, to get the feel of the pelvis staying true as your leg operates with a um, level neutral pelvis and side line. This is much more of a mobiliser stabiliser. The bendy wendies in the room, and there are plenty of you, you do need to um, watch that you don't just kick your leg going la di da di da because I know you would be doing that. Now you could argue that if you want to just kick your leg around, it can't do any harm if there's no pain. But if you want the benefit of both stability and mobility, then this is what we're looking for. All right, we're going to see if we can get, now that we've placed the feelings, see if we can have a little bit more of a dynamic moment. So I think Joseph intended the ability to take yourself to end range. An end range requires a stable pelvis. So pelvic stability here, that means the hip bones 
the sit bones don't move as you kick, kick, and you reach away. And kick, kick, push, and it's away you go. Core connect, find your abdominals, find the side oblique area here. But equally, the feeling of the hamstring in that moment there stretching, and then as you push backwards, the hip flexor, stretch. Okay, a couple more. I'm hoping that we can kind of build on this. Maybe what we will discover during lockdown is a true mat works relationship. It's to our level. I know that we, there's no way we can um, do it as he intended it. We have to modify too many things. But if we can reach the parts of the body he intended, then we're halfway there, aren't we? All right, from there then, <coughs> I'm gonna bring you onto all fours again. And from the all four shape, take your feet, line them up with the bottom end of your mat. This is the final activity, I realise time's gone. This is where time kind of, to me, goes nowhere. I've got a wide all fours, haven't I? My hands are wide. In other words, my box shape is, is a bigger, it's not a box anymore. I've got a longer base from knees and shins to hands than I have. I'm going to slowly pull myself forwards, pulling the ground under me until my elbows bend and I'm like, it's almost a three quarter press and then I'm going to push up again. I'm going to pull the ground under me with my hands, armpits, and then push it away in a greater range. Inhaling, forwards I'll go. Exhale, pull the ground under me. Inhale, pushing back and reaching back. Slow motion version then. I'm pulling against the ground now. My elbows bend in the direction of my ribs. I then push the ground away and pull my seat to my heels. And again, pulling and pushing. And again, navel to spine, pull to support your um, spine through the frontal muscle connection. People, the next time you find yourself pulling and your hands, um, shoulders and above your hands, stay. Breathe in. Get your feet tucked right under. Exhale, keep your chest between your thumbs and into plank. Inhaling and down. Exhale, press the ground away. Into plank, go. Inhale. Exhaling, zip up and hollow as you push against the ground. Inhaling, none of this is in the back. Everything's absolutely in your trunk stability, armpit. Keep your bicep almost spun forwards. So the um, arm position is correct in the shoulder. There should be no pinching going on. Okay, and last time, up into the plank stay. Now push your seat upwards, pushing the ground away again, but elevating the heels. People that drop down at their ankles, try and pull yourself forwards into extension. Breathe, exhaling, zip, hollow, up you go pushing the ground away, then press down through your heels, pick up through your tiptoes, draw yourself forward, lowering the hips down. This is your last one. Breathe and stretch the leg. Push the ground away and start to walk your hands. Back, back, back. Bend the legs to truly get the spine shape necessary. Hand to hand to foot, breathe, head hanging, core connect, shrink the tub, and reverse rolling the spine all the way back. Okay, there you go, people, well done. That was your Pilates mat work workout, and hopefully, there's detail in there for you to make sense more of more floor work. Tomorrow, I will take you into a hit, which is the high intensity version of working out safely for us it won't be you know a random workout it'll be very much designed around what i know about us but to put strength and power with a bit of cardiovascular work that we all need bearing in mind that some of us don't get any of that just um, because we're in lockdown i want to make sure i can tick that box please feed back to me what you actually want because we're here for a long while hence I'm trying to make a series each week that has a very specific aim rather than just churning out, churning out. 
If you don't like the level or you want more, you must say, because I have no other way of gauging it really. Anyway, have a great Monday. Go and do more stuff. Um, go and do a legs workout from all the myriad of videos that there are. Go back to one of them because it seems it doesn't seem great for me to just keep producing the same stuff. We did some brilliant leg work last week and I put a bit of a message on telling you which of the legs were the roller. I would say go and do one of those videos, it's 20 at the moment, to complete and kind of um, supplement what you've just done in the mat works. Okay, so goodbye from me. I promise I keep it to the right timing and I have done. This is Tom's request. All right, and I'll see you very soon, i.e. tomorrow morning. Stay well.